My name is Michaela. I'm actually from Austria. I'm a marine biologist and naturalist. Um, and a lot of things are always quite curious why I decided to become a marine biologist because you know I'm from a landlocked country, particularly people from my country are very curious about that. But I've always been fascinated, fascinated about the ocean. And as a very young child, when I found out um, through some movie um, that the blue whales, the largest animals on the planet are endangered, I told my mom, I'm going to do something about it and decided to become a marine biologist. That's the basic gist of it. Um, and, and then years later, about 12 years later, um, or 10 years later, I decided to, before I actually spend a, you know, a lot of time and money to go through all the degrees, to check out a few um, um, research boats and other uh, organizations. So I joined Tetis Research in Italy, which was uh, quite fascinating. I got a strong interest, particularly in whales and sperm whales. And I also joined Cetacean Research and Rescue Unit, which is actually up here in, in the UK. And I got to see basking sharks and a lot of amazing things. So I fell in love with marine biology even more, particularly marine mammals um, in general. And then it was sure I was sure to that let's do it. I went to university, started uh, my bachelor in biology uh, with focus on zoology. I already did a lot of marine related courses, particularly marine environment and protection then, but I also did all kinds of stuff from reef um, topics to um, invertebrates, uh, limnology at the Danube. So I had quite a lot of fun there too. Um, and then I went and moved to Australia to do my master in marine biology and ecology which was quite amazing, very, very different to Austria, as you can imagine. And I learned a lot about the reef, um, the animals there. It was mostly reef um, and climate change related, which was very interesting too. And I did a lot of very diverse uh, courses there and projects, and I've met a lot of amazing people and got even more interested, particularly in ecotourism, due to my um, courses with Alistair Beutels, which is one of the pioneers in ecotourism in Queensland, in, in Australia, East Coast in general. And after that, I decided, oh, let's give studying a little bit of a break after this master. Um, I enjoyed the Great Barrier Reef. I also um, got a look at some of the nature reserves in Queensland, particularly. And even through my master, I also got a very nice uh, look uh, look into the actual um, yeah projects that are going on at the reef, which was very very interesting and informative. Um, and then straight after, no plan whatsoever, I kind of fell into this job in Iceland and started working as a naturalist, as you can see me there on the sailing boat, um, but also other companies, but I uh, stuck for many years with this company. Um, I very much enjoyed this time and instead of just doing one season there, I ended up there for four years, so <laughs> life just happens. Um, as you can see, those are actually blue whales there, so they pass uh, by this bay in Husavik every year on their migration route, bird and all. It's an incredible thing to see. Um, and after uh, after all this time in Husavik, I also got to do go to Greenland through this path as a naturalist uh, with North Sailing, that company up north. And they also did an exploration to Norway. It was only for two years and it was amazing um, getting to work on boats, talking to people, educating them about what you're seeing and generally just enjoying the whole scenery and the animals with your colleagues and with um, guests that are on the boat. We had hundreds of orcas and a dozen humpback whales. I spent a quite amazing New Year's Eve um, with 300 orcas, about six humpback whales and northern lights. So that was amazing. And they actually go up there to feed on the herring. Um, so that was quite a spectacle every year. 
So straight after I went to Edinburgh and decided to do a master in ecotourism, I, lot, I learned a lot, particularly field work and marine nature reserves, but also terrestrial nature reserves. It was quite educational. And again, I kind of fell into something new. I actually planned to settle down in the UK, but uh, somehow I, I fell into an apprenticeship um, doing my dive master um, through Petty uh, in Maui and also doing some volunteering with some organizations there. And that was an amazing experience that shortly after I came back, which you will see later. In between, I had a quick job in the Maldives as a marine biologist doing all kinds of stuff from tourism, uh, from research to tourism, to outreach projects with uh, other islands, particularly uh, local islands. And yeah, I had quite an experience all there too. And then I went straight back to Maui after that, worked for Whale Trust quite a lot and other organizations such as the Maui Ocean Center. And my main job actually at that time, just before COVID hit, was working for Whale Trust, which is an uh, NGO, particularly doing humpback whale research about sound, but also a lot of outreach. And I was working for that and the, um, that the conference that they have every year, which was actually again <laughs> this year, and I did it remotely this time. And I, I got a very nice insight into my ocean center and the, um, yeah, and other stuff. So just quickly in the end, in the last 30 seconds, <laughs> <laughs> that I, have. Um, I wanted to show you one of the incredible experience I made just before leaving Hawaii, which was the birth of a baby humpback whale, which was just beyond incredible and something you will never forget. And yeah, so I've, I've experienced quite a lot and I would not miss any of this. And now I'm hoping to settle down in the UK, but we'll see what, what's going to happen next. <laughs>